My name's Ian White, I work for the conservation charity People's Trust for Endangered Species as their Dormouse Officer and we're here in this wood at Taisley Woods on the Isle of Wight uh, where we've come to do a Dormouse check for the National Dormouse Monitoring Programme. So Dormice are a fabulous indicator species of high quality woodland, of high quality habitat. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that they're, they're very important. And because they're kind of an arboreal species, they move around in the tree and shrub canopy, it's not just the woodland that they occupy, it's also how do they disperse from that woodland while well, they need good hedgerows, perhaps linear woodlands, to, to connect other areas in the landscape so dormouse can disperse from the woodland of their birth and move out across the, the wider landscape to occupy new areas of territory. So before you can set up an NDMP site, you need to know you have dormice present. And there's two ways of doing that, neither of which require a license. So one is by looking for hazelnuts have been opened by uh, hazel dormice. So these will be a circular hole, but the key thing to look for is the teeth marks on the cut edge of the hazelnut. They'll be in a spiral uh, rather than perpendicular to the side of the nut. That will show you that this hazelnut has been opened by a hazel dormouse. The other way is to use a footprint tunnel have one here that's been out for, for uh, 24 hours and if we open it and look at the paper inside we can see there that there's the ink pad at the side here and the ink is uh, olive oil and um, human grade charcoal and obviously that's the ink pad the animal steps on there and then steps on the the tracking paper inside and here we can see some dormouse footprints they've got these triangular pads that show that dormice have investigated this tube and come in and we can then see that actually yes dormice are in this hedgerow because of these prints. Neither looking for hazelnuts nor using footprint tunnels requires a license and is a good way of showing dormice are present. They generally work best in hedgerows or dense scrubby habitats. Dormouse nesting there. So, from what I can see, there was no dormouse, but there's evidence of dormice certainly in terms of these green leaves that have been picked from the tree and brought into the nest box. So, evidence of dormice, but not a dormouse yet. So it's a bit of an atypical dormouse nest, but there is some green leaves in there, so we'll take this one off and have a look and see if we can find anything. And so we're going to do this to make sure if there is anything in this, uh, in this box, it, it can't escape. Um, because we just want to count how many here. We want to weigh them and we want to sex them as well. Let's uh, first see if there's anything in it first. So take the lid out. Yeah, a bit of an odd nest, but there are some green leaves in here which suggest dormouse. And I think we've got a torpid dormouse here. Yeah, we have a torpid dormouse, so... This is like a mini hibernation state. So when dormice go into hibernation, they hibernate in the ground on the ground over winter between November and kind of mid-April. They store food within their bodies and they use that to survive hibernation. But we often find dormice in torpor in, uh, in the early part of spring. Um, and this is a mini hibernation. They usually go into torpor um, because the weather's a bit bad, so it might have been raining and they haven't been able to feed. But going into torpor is all about saving energy because when they're like this, it's not really sleep. Their body temperature will have dropped to the air temperature. Their heart rate will have slowed from about 300 beats per minute to about perhaps two beats per minute. So it's all about saving energy from, from a dormouse point of view. So 
So we've set all the box up so they're ready for her to go back in. So we're just going to pop her in the hole at the back and, uh, and she can settle down and, uh, and rest out the rest of the day before she comes out to feed tonight. Just bung this one. Well, this is a bit of a wood mouse nest, but we'll just have a quick. Oh no, I think there is a dormouse in there, so we'll take that off and get that in a bag and have a closer look. I think that's why we've got another talk with dormouse. This one will probably wake up, um, I've taken him out of the box, he'll probably wake up in the uh, next 15 or 20 minutes, but that's not a problem. Uh, it's quite a nice day now, there's plenty of food around, so um, any energy he has lost he, can, lost, he can quickly put back on again. So we are still going to sex him, we are going to weigh him. Um, looks a bit of a, a slightly chunkier animal to me. Let's see if we can find out whether it's a, it's a boy or a girl and then it looks like, from what I can see, it looks like a female. Yep, I think a female. And you can see how gripping my fingers quite happily. Still a bit sleepy, still slowly waking up. Feel its little, tiny little claws just hold on to my finger there. Uh, just showing how well adapted these animals are for a kind of a life in the trees. If this is a wood mouse, it'd be jumping down to ground, but it's not, it's a dormouse, and these are kind of designed to climb in the tree and shrub canopy, so quite happy just, just hanging on there, um, not feeling threatened at all. So we've had a great day out in the woods, uh, checking a number of dormouse boxes. We've been fortunate in finding a few dormice. We found some in pairs, so hopefully they will be having some babies later on in the year. And obviously all the data we've had feeds into the National Dormouse Monitoring Programme, which gives us the state of the Britain's dormouse population. But there are other things we do to help dormice as well. So we run training events for people wanting to know more about dormouse. Uh, we run landscape scale projects that help enhance uh, habitats for dormice and for other species. Uh, we fund research for things that can lead into and can help us with dormouse conservation. And we help and advise on woodland management. Uh, and if you want to know more about that, please see the next video uh, in part two of this in the series.